Hey you, welcome back to the channel. I hope you all are having a great day. So, I hey, I mean, at the very least we could say Donald Trump's a good dancer, right? <laughs> uh, you know, of course, that's part of some of the video footage that was released with uh, him and uh, Epstein, Epstein um, during their party days and um, Mar-a-Lago and Palm Beach at Trump's estate. Um, of course, um, you know, after that course of time, uh, Trump has uh, denounced his um, friendship with um, Epstein and, uh, you know, obviously it has distanced, distanced himself. Uh, but today we want to talk a little bit about um, you know, what's been going on with uh, Trump and Elon Omar uh, speaking about uh, how I think this is going to affect Trump's chances of being reelected, uh, how that's going to translate over to Andrew Yang and what the political landscape is going to look like. And I want to talk about some very interesting, uh, has uh, Andrew Yang revealed who his running mate is going to be? So we're going to talk about that today. So, um, uh, there was an interview uh, that uh, Andrew Yang was part of recently where he discussed uh, that he very much specifically would like his running mate to be a woman. So that's one checkbox checked off that he wants it to be a woman. Uh, and not only that, but he would prefer a cabinet full of women. <laughs> so. What that means is that a lot of the uh, candidates who are women uh, are going to have uh, who, who are in the um, in the political world here uh, are going to have a great opportunity. Excuse me, are going to have a great opportunity to work with Andrew Yang's cabinet. Now, I'm sure many of us have our favorite women politicians that we like to see with Andrew Yang. But what is clear is that he wants a cabinet full of women and he wants a woman running mate. Uh, and so, uh, you know, of course, on uh, some earlier videos, I have uh, got excited about the, the, the idea of people like Tosi Gabbard, Marianne Williamson being uh, part of Andrew Yang's cabinet. And I think it looks like he may be thinking pretty much along the same line. So don't be surprised if uh, Andrew Yang isn't targeting Tulsi Gabbard and Marianne Williamson. So pretty darn interesting stuff there. Um, I also want to talk about Trump um, uh, and, you know, this huge thing that's been going on with the condemnation of his racist tweets. So let's talk about that a little bit and how does that affect Trump going forward? So, uh, you know, of course, Trump and a lot of the Trump support system, uh, the Trumpers, the um, part of the government that now practices Trumpism, uh, which is his own <laughs> thing now. It's, you know, it's not democracy. Uh, it's, it's, it's more akin to uh, a dictator and his followers. Uh, and so if Trump is a racist, he has many of the great, the core ideas down where you're a dictator uh, and you're uh, a racist, uh, similar to what you got with Hitler being a dictator and, <laughs> uh, and, and having his, his whole country follow him, you know, without any more question. Um, but I think it might be actually, uh, a little bit more complicated than that. Right. So a lot of people have kind of straddled the idea of is Trump a racist or isn't he a racist? You know, I think it is pretty much wide accepted now that at the very least, uh, or what can be agreed upon by many people is that the tweets were racist, right? And most minority people, uh, people of color, uh, you know, phrases like go back anywhere, 
uh, automatically send signals of racism. I don't care how you semantically try to twist it. It's going to always come out racist. So even trying to defend it looks very, it, it looks almost ridiculous. But the complicated part to this is that many have come to the conclusion that Trump is not a racist yet still. Where it is uh, the, the, the huge concern and huge problem with something like this is what I found as I've had dialogue with racist people uh, in a civilized way to try to understand uh, how do you get to a point of racism. And what I found along the way, um, as many of us have found, whether it be through uh, a personal encounter or reading books or uh, reading documentaries, watching movies, whatever the case may be, uh, what we found is that there are periods of time where racist people have these epiphanies where they decide that the notion of racism is ridiculous. Uh, judging people on just their skin color alone is ridiculous. We know in the United States that uh, for the most part, people in the United States pretty much share the same culture, right? Uh, you know, we're not like other places. Americans are pretty much Americans. Like we don't vastly do a lot of different things. Uh, and so there isn't a huge cultural divide in America, like where you might get with some other places that have very dominant cultural blending. Uh, in America, a lot of people are pretty traditionally American. You know, it's not, it's not like people are going off and saying, well, I'm part of this culture. I'm just going to stay in my corner here and observe this culture. No, a lot of us meld together. And uh, so the point I'm making is that trying to distinguish racism in a way of the cultural significance of it I don't think is does a it, it really stands out in America. So in America, I think it does go more towards point more towards just the idea of your your skin color, your skin tone, and, and things like that. Uh, and because of that, it just makes racism even more ridiculous without the cultural connotation uh, related to it. But what it seems to be happening, what many people believe now is that Trump, although he may not subscribe to the racist ideology in the form of being a uh, a, uh, a grandmaster of the uh, Ku Klux Klan. Uh, <laughs> uh, he is uh, a person who's found the means to manipulate uh, racist people. And I believe that's why people like Richard Spencer of the alt-right uh, has began to see through uh, what's happening with Donald Trump. You know, Richard Spencer is actually one of the more intelligent uh, racist uh, heads of the racist group because what he's seen is he's seen that Trump is only manipulating racists to his end. But when it comes to a lot of the uh, Americans who are blue collar workers who live in these uh, very economically challenging uh, positions and situations, he's beginning to see that Trump doesn't have their best interests at heart either. <laughs> so, you know, Trump's for the Trump dynasty and the Trump world. And because of that, although a lot of these racist groups are trying to uh, use Trump as their uh, symbol, uh, you know, it's almost like they're being suckered by Trump. And so many are waking up to that. Uh, and that's why, uh, um, you know, the, 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 frame of what's happening with Trump is that he's starting to lose his base on all sides. Now, this is very important to the Andrew Yang campaign, because if we take a stroll back down memory lane, we get to 2016, we have Trump going up against Hillary Clinton, and you have Hillary Clinton uh, at the height of scandal from going all the way back to the Bill Clinton days to the email scandals. And Hillary Clinton at this point, as being a part of so many administrations, uh, is just not coming off as a trustworthy person. So we're also in the mindset of outsiders, entrepreneurs, business people needs to be the next entry point in our political system with our candidates. So there's a lot of events unfolding that is making it quite favorable for Donald Trump to win. Um, 
But there's a lot of things working for Donald Trump in his favor as well. Uh, his base. The, at this point in time, he has the racist base. He has the, <laughs> you know, he has uh, the majority of the white American vote. He has uh, even a large percentage of African American votes, right? And now we're facing a Trump that has not only not lived up to all of many things to many people, uh, he's now with this big scandal with uh, Ilhan, Ilhan Omar um, now presenting a very uncomfortable situation where a lot of his strongest supporters and base are starting to, if not fall away from his support, they're trying to now kind of put themselves in a damage control situation where they're probably going to end up not voting, right? That's what's going to happen with a lot of people. It's not so much that they will completely denounce Trump, but they may not vote at all. Uh, a lot of African-Americans who did support him, they're probably just not going to vote. And so, the expansion of the Trump Trump campaign uh, is not going to happen, right? He's certainly not going to be able to pull independent votes. What the only thing Trump could do now is try to hold the base he has and keep them from slipping away. And at this point in time, he's been uh, losing a, a large portion of that base since 2016. So it's going to be very difficult for Trump to win like he did in 2016. Uh, it's going to be very, very difficult. And, and Trump's not done yet. Uh, now, the one good thing that is a good thing for us, maybe a, not so much a good thing for the Trump campaign, is that he has managed to be to stay out of war. He seemingly doesn't want war. And that's a good thing. Right. He's been on the fringe of it. He's played around with it a lot. He's pushed over, just about to go over the cliff and brought everything back. But he doesn't want war. And that's probably the only thing that could get Trump a surefire victory in the election. Um, you know, the rest of it is probably not going to be enough because uh, uh, there is a uh, understanding of how the economics works in political systems and how certain things put forth affect uh, future events. And so in saying that, uh, uh, it, it is easy for the United States of America to find a candidate with ideas like Trump uh, that are more business driven or shall I say more um, economic uh, incentive based ideas that uh, cause uh, citizens to prosper. It's easier to find a person like that. And at the same time, a candidate who isn't getting to all these debacles and racism and controversy and creating so much uncertainty day, day to day. <laughs> so that's what makes it more so um, uh, 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 more so for Trump. It's going to be harder for him to win uh, in 2020. And so that means wh what I think we're looking at right now is we're looking at more so uh, who on the Democratic side has got a good chance of winning. Now, we look at people like Elizabeth Warren and we look at people like Bernie Sanders, many people feel that they they are too late, that, that 2016 was their time, and now that time has passed, right? So you knock those out. The, the true strongest people left to Andrew Yang, I would say, is Biden and Buttigieg. Now, Buttigieg, I don't believe, can win either. Uh, at, the, at the very least, Buttigieg is suffering from what you might call... Uh, at the very at, uh, at the very least, he's going to be looked at as being incompetent, right, for for handling the presidential duties. When it comes to being young and the fresh face, excuse me, fresh new ideas, Buttigieg will fit that bill. Biden won't, but Biden's looked at as a continuation of the Obama administration. So a lot of people still aren't are bent out of shape about the Obama administration. So that's what's going to make it difficult for Biden to go forward. And so that leaves Andrew Yang. Right. The candidate who can pull independence, the candidate who can pull conservatives and Trumpers and, and a variety of things. Right. He, he can do all those things and he can be all those things. And uh, um, a, 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 a candidate like Andrew Yang is going to serve uh, all bases. Now, again, Biden might be a safer bet for the Democratic Party. However, he is probably not going to be what the country wants. 
based on his past record. And so as Trump continues along going down this um, this path with Ilhan uh, Omar, uh, this could be very dangerous for Trump as well. And it could uh, unfortunately end in a very tragic situation. You know, we've had assassination attempts on Congress people before. Uh, we've had Congress people shot um, on, 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 on less, on, on less uh, uh, you know, uh, things that, that have come across their way. And what you have with Trump and Ilhan Omar is you have a very dangerous situation where Trump has dropped up his base enough to go out and probably do some crazy stuff, make, maybe even attempt some people's lives like Ilhan Omar. And goodness forbid that uh, Ilhan Omar is injured or hurt or even worse than that. And one of Trump's tirades and one of his uh, rallies that uh, seems more like a Nazi uh, uh, <laughs> rally of the of the uh, of the World War Two era. Uh, you know, if some harm comes to that congresswoman uh, based on that, uh, that is something that I think will be uh, the, the nail in the coffin for Trump's campaign. I think he certainly will not win. Uh, if that occurs, and I think he is beginning to pull back, which I think is a smart thing to do for him. But um, this puts Andrew Yang, I think, more out in the forefront, uh, more uh, extends his chances of winning uh, a great deal more, right, with all this happening, because this is affecting Trump's uh, campaign. Oh, believe you me, it is. And uh, seeing that uh, Trump needs all the support he can get to pull off this election because his base is shrinking. Uh, his strategy, he says it's good, but uh, 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 if you do a little bit of research, you'll find on both sides, all political strategies that uh, uh, on both sides, it's disagreement in that. <laughs> and uh, uh, this time, I think Trump has overplayed his hand uh, and it will not work well for him. Um, but anyway, I love to hear you guys' thoughts and opinions about uh, what's been happening with that. And uh, who do you think Andrew Yang is going to pick as a running mate? Is it going to end up being Tosi and Marianne Williamson? Love to hear you guys' thoughts and comments. Don't forget about our project, BitcoinMYK.com, our own universal basic income program. And that's all I got in this video. If you like content like this, don't forget to like and subscribe. And until next time, take care.